How long we got now, Ed? Hello guys, good afternoon. Welcome to a, another DW live show. Season two, episode two. Who would have thought it, eh? Here we are, back again. So, <laughs> lots and lots going on on the show this week. Um, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Um, you know, we had a really good show last week. We really enjoyed it. Um, sadly, Dom is still not able to join us we're hoping in the next few weeks he will be able to so um we can all look forward to that get well soon dom i don't know if you're watching uh, but big thanks to ed and the team from stream who are looking after us today thank you ed you're a superstar so guys without any further ado i'm just going to tell you what we've got coming up on the show um we have got the amazing sasha freeze from the business narrative who is going to be giving us a virtual events masterclass today. The four P's um, of uh, virtual events, platform, planning, production, and people. I've been looking at those four P's all week, so I can't wait to hear about them. So um, this has been a really, you know, we've had hundreds of people subscribe to the show. So um, thank you for coming, for, for looking on, guys. And, you know, if you're watching it now or live, we really appreciate it. And, you know, we look forward to all your comments in the, um, in the chat room. Um, this season is sponsored by our good friends at Eventer. Um, and every week they're going to be telling us a little bit about their products and what they do. So without any further ado, I am going to hand you over to Andy from Eventer, who will tell you about what, the, what they're talking about this week. Thank you. So I hope like us, you're really enjoying these masterclass sessions because quite frankly, we can see how massively practical they are both for the industry as a whole, but also all the individuals working within it. For us last year, this was one of huge adaptation and change to all the challenges that we came up and we had to experience. But we are very, very proud of what we've produced in our on-air virtual event platform. Having now provided the event platform for over 600,000 attendees around the world, we fully appreciate the challenges faced by all event professionals. And we've set out to meet those both in terms of technology and the full wraparound service that our team can provide. We know only too well that the platform alone will not lead to that full execution, but it must be married with experienced technical and support staff to provide a slick delivery and ensure that your events provide the level of experience that your customers are demanding. We want to enable you to deliver customer events and experiences that are able to engage and inspire. And for us, that is at the heart of everything that we do. The beauty of the system is that we can show and demonstrate it to you in a very real life situation and not just talk about it in terms of on a PowerPoint presentation or a slick PDF. So if you'd like to get in touch with us and we'll be able to create a tailored demonstration, please either contact the Delegate Wranglers or come to me directly and we'll be more than happy to help. We're also excited over the next few weeks, we'll be announcing some more exciting developments through our platform that will really be taking your event to the next level. So once again, thank you for having a sponsor this event and enjoy the masterclass. Thank you, Andy, for that. Um, really good to have you guys um, supporting us this, this season anyway. Uh, really appreciate it, Andy. So on with the show. Um, as usual, we are live on YouTube and we are live on the Delegate Wranglers Facebook group. Um, hope you can all see it, see everything okay. Um, a bit, I'll just give a quick shout out to some of the people in the chat room if that's okay. So we have got, hello, Charlotte Russell. Hi, Charlotte, how are you? Um, Leah Waller, hi, Leah. Tina Wright, Andy Leveland, we just saw Andy, please say hello to Andy uh, from Eventer. Uh, we've got Wayne, we've got Karen Edwards, Craig McGee, hey Craig, how are you? Rebecca Towell, Anika, hi Anika. Definitely going for the award of the, the person who's at every show. Um, Chrissy Bray, hey Chrissy, how are you? You okay? So um, yeah, thank you to everybody joining on uh, YouTube as well. We've got lots of people watching there as well. 
So without any further ado, we'll get on with the show. Um, so we've got Sasha Fries from the Business Narrative. Now, Sasha is an absolute virtual and hybrid event expert, award-winning um, producer. Sasha, hello. How are you? I'm really well. I'm really well. Hi, Neil. Great to see you. So, Sasha, do you want to tell us um, a bit about, you know, your background just quickly? I know you've been on the show, another person who's been on the show before. Quickly about the things you've won, what you've been nominated for and what you guys are up to at the moment. Sure. Delighted to. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and to be coming back for the second time for another masterclass. And I'm really excited about doing this. Um, I lead the team at The Business Narrative. We have grown exponentially in the last year. Um, and we've won a couple of awards. Um, the week before lockdown, I personally was event producer of the year with Conference News. And then in August, the team were shortlisted um, for a CNIT award for Conference of the Year for um, our event for the Open Data Institute, our in-person event um, last year. So an award-winning team of a real mix of, you know, geeks and serious event producers and all sorts of different kind of production um, and digital and live event experience and in the last year we have really kind of upped our game on digital events we've learned so much in terms of what works in terms of making engaging events and yeah. creating events that delight um delight our participants and we've come i've come up with this model around the four p's and i'm very excited to be sharing it today great stuff so sasha without any further ado um we've got a bit of a satellite delay on our conversation so they might be a bit clunky everyone but without <laughs> any further ado i'm going to hand you over to sasha i'm really looking forward to this i've got my pen and paper in hand ready to take some tips um away you go sasha Brilliant. Thank you so much. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. This is the Virtual Events Masterclass, looking at the four Ps, platform planning, production and people. And the reason that I've uh, put this together is that when we're talking to clients and people in the industry and event organisers, everybody's learning about this. And so there can be a little bit of confusion around how the different pieces fit together. Um, and that's really what today's about. I'm hoping that you'll go away from today with a real sense of the different activities you need to do in these four areas of platform planning, production, and people. And there's also a checklist that I'll give you um, towards the end of the presentation that you can go to our website and download, which kind of summarizes um, the kind of key issues that you need to think about. So before I kick off on platform, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the business narrative. We are an events agency and production partner helping nonprofits, think tanks, media owners, businesses realize their purpose. We're very much about events with purpose through events that have a real lasting impact. And we weave that impact into the story of your event because every event needs a narrative. We are the business narrative. You know, we work with corporates and businesses, associations and media think tanks, um, organizations right across the spectrum, but we love working with technology, um, medical associations, a whole range of, of different clients. And over the last year, we've created a lot of digital events, and that's some of the expertise that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. Those of you who were here last time might have um, seen our periodic table of business events. Um, I always love sharing it because I don't have to tell you how many moving parts there are to in-person events, digital events, hybrid events. And so this is just a little bit of an aid memoir in terms of the kind of things that you need to think about. You can find this on our website. It's linked on our, it's our, our link post on our, our Twitter if you're, you're looking for that. And I know that, you know, everybody here today is very likely, you know, that small group of thoughtful, committed citizens who can change the world. And I think events, whether events are in person or online or, or some combination of those two, events really do create impact for organizations. Um, so let's take a look at the four P's of virtual event design and delivery. So we've got platform, and I think a lot of people start with platform um, and get quite focused on platform. And one of the things that I'm gonna talk about is the relative kind of importance of that. Then planning, which is a whole host of different activities, a lot of the things you do for an in-person event and a whole host of extra things you need to do. There's two parts to production, um, in my experience, of digital events, and then crucially people, whether that's your internal team or the people you're outsourcing with. Um, so I've built a model 
Um, for those of you who remember Tetris, I think of this as a slightly kind of Tetris-like <laughs> experience, but all of these pieces um, build together, really. And so what you'll see is that platform is actually, although it, although it is the foundation point, it's actually, it's only three little boxes compared to some of the others. And so while it's important, and it clearly is, it's actually about layering on top the planning and the production and the crucial people piece that makes it work. Because digital events are much more akin to some kind of you know, TV experience and we're increasingly finding that we are creating events that have more of the experience of an immersive engaging kind of TV program um, than a kind of flat webinar experience. So let's take a look at platform and what that means, because that is the kind of foundation point. So before you think about your platform, you've really got to think about what, what the event is that you're creating, because your platform choice is very much driven by what you're trying to achieve. So I'm guessing there are people listening today who do awards and conferences, team building, alumni events, summits, exhibitions, private client events. I mean, it's really interesting. You know, we used to do a lot of in-person private client events um, in the kind of professional services, wealth management sector, where we were doing private views of galleries. Um, you can probably see behind me the Christian Dior artwork. Um, and so we're finding that we're, you know, we're pitching to clients about doing digital experiences of private client events as well. So first of all, you want to think about what is the event? That you're creating and then you and then you probably want to think about that in the context of what i see as the crucial building blocks what is your event made up of what are the things that make the difference content content is key and actually i think because me and a lot of the team at the business narrative come from a content background um in terms of b2b events i think that's part of why we've been able to do this successfully because understanding how to reimagine your content so it's engaging is a crucial part of digital events but then around that you've got the community bringing people together convening people in a time if not a place so that they can have that collective experience which many people in many sectors are really missing you know we did something actually on the first first and second of december for the british society for immunologists I managed to organise it that it was the day that the um, Oxford vaccine was approved by the MHRA. And at the end of the day, um, there were loads of kind of thank yous up on the platform. And somebody said, oh, I'm really proud to be an immunologist today. And I think it was that sense of, you know, reconnecting yeah. with people and community. And I think a really great digital event does that. And then connection. You know, everybody talks about the holy grail of networking and connecting people. And I think you know, whether that's speed networking or creating round tables or formats where people can engage or make meetings, you know, so those are the building blocks. And you might want to think about the relative importance of those pieces when you are kind of assessing what your platform requirements are going to be. So there's a bunch of questions you want to ask. Do you want single or multiple stages? You know, do you want to speak a green room? A really good speaker experience and prepping the speakers, we think, and presenters, we think is really key. And so does the platform have that or not? Can you do breakouts, roundtables, sessions, whatever they might be called? Are they within the platform or not? I think there's a really big question about, you know, how much tech support you have. Do you want to build an event tech stack, which, you know, links to integrates a few different um platforms that do different pieces or do you want one platform that does most things sasha can, can i ask you, you a quick question on sorry sure. sasha can i sorry about that guys it's a delay on this is terrible <laughs> um, um you were just mentioning then about those building blocks you know about having the things set up what happens when a client comes to you and says you know they haven't thought about that i haven't got the budget that kind of thing is that is it something that you know you should absolutely put your your foot down and you know about having a green room and having producers and having all these people involved? Is it absolutely something that you think you should really put your foot down about? It's a really good question, Neil. I mean, I think you know clearly you've got to work within a client's budget, but then you will need to have a conversation about the quality of event they want. And so there are some clients where that high production experience is really vital. Yeah. And there are other clients where just putting a number of events out, you know, is the driving factor. So I think our preference is to be able to prep the speakers well, um, both in advance of the event and on the day, you know, but if, 
you know, a client doesn't have a budget for a platform that includes all of that or, you know, the tech team to do it. So it's it's really about communication, making it yeah. clear to them that that's fine. But to that budget, here's what you're going to get. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I hope that. I hope that answers that question. Um, you know, are you going to have pre-records or recordings? What percentage of pre-records are you going to have? You know, a client came to me last week and said, we've got a five stream event. And so four streams are going to be our existing content that people will, you know, access on demand. And then we're coming to you for the stream, which will be the live content stream. And what we want to do there is record it all three months in advance. And I was like, <laughs> and how is that going to be live? Uh, but I think what that demonstrates is that, you know, everybody is working their way around, you know, what is the best way to do things. And I understand that people are concerned about the technical risk and there's a safety to having anything, everything, everything pre-recorded. But I think it can have an impact on the live feeling and the just connectivity on, of the event. You know, we just, think I was just going to say just on that, Sasha, um, I also feel like, you know, we're kind of coming up to 12 months of doing this now, really. You know, you think about it, it's only kind of about around now that we're going to be learning all the lessons that we need to learn and, and changing and adapting and thinking that definitely works and that definitely doesn't work. Do you, do you kind of agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think we're all learning all the time. And I think that, you know, we've got to the place where we were recommending up to 20 percent of pre-records, you know, to grab those people who can't make the date or on a very poor broadband um, or, you know, there are other reasons for pre-recording, but to have enough of that live content, the majority of it, so that it's got that energy um, yeah. of bringing people together. And I think you're completely right about that, Neil. Um, you know, do you are you going to have expo booths, posters, sponsors, partners, yeah. or are you going to use that expo area to showcase you as an organisation and the streams of work and projects that you've got on um, the crucial networking can you do one-on-one -on -one video chat which we love i know not every platform can do it we work with hopin actually we're one of half a dozen agencies in the uk yeah. with a hopin agency partnership and so what we love about that is that you can do that kind of speed networking one-on-one -on -one video you can also invite up to four people to have a video chat um, but also text chat, can you do round tables where people can talk? So I think those are the core event questions. There's yeah. other questions that you'll want to think about. Is there a mobile app? Do you want a mobile app? Do you want people to be doing two things? Do you want them to be looking at their likely, you know, desktop, laptop screen as well as on a mobile app? Do you want a social wall? There was a lot of talk early on about gamification, virtual goodie bags. That seems to have tailed away and it's about, you know, really making engaging kind of content. For, so we work with a lot of scientific events where there's posters and abstracts. You know, can the digital studio question, I think, is really key. Are you going to work with the you know, studio that comes with a platform or are you going, as we are today, to broadcast from a digital studio and our RTMP that right into um, the event platform? which gives you much higher production values. You can do all sorts of live vision mixing and name straps and branding. Um, and so if you've got sponsors, that can be really important. And also in terms of the outputs, obviously what you get with digital events is that, you know, you're gonna have all the video output. We top and tail that with the branding. So you can use that, you know, right across all your comms channels. And also how much, I mentioned this earlier, how much integration do you wanna do across various different technologies and how much risk do you wanna take if it, supposed to connect to youtube and it doesn't on the day um yeah. so i think thinking about your requirements that way can be really key quick what question. are you trying quick, to achieve for the quick question sasha sorry about the delay um do you think no, um, given that. given all the different platforms that are out there um is it worth for people to try and you know get as many go on as many courses or training things or things like you know like this where you might learn a bit about how to use each one would you recommend that's something that kind of you know freelance event um events people should do you know i know i think i know the answer to it but um is that you know are those kind of courses Look, freely I available I mean, there are lots of freely available courses and every platform wants you to go on a demo. I think everyone has to make their own choice about how much time they've got to learn about different platforms. It can feel really overwhelming and I'd rather match the platform to the event. So understanding what you're trying to achieve and then working out the platform choice from there. 
And, you know, you can drive yourself crazy with looking at every single platform out there. You've got to get yeah. to a long list and a short list that meet your criteria. And I'm going to show people, you know, a model that we use for that. But what are you trying to achieve? That sense of presence, convening people, you know, in a time rather than space and that lasting impact. So let's take a look at the platforms. As you say, there are a lot of platforms. I don't think this is an exhaustive list. This is a list we put together of some of the ones that we've looked at. We've done a little bit of analysis against on the right hand side, those that are more 2D website based and on the left hand side, those more 3D ones, things like iVent and Six Connects and VFairs, which a lot of the kind of expo um, event models seem to kind of go towards you go into a 3D exhibition hall. I think there are limitations to that, but I know some people really like it. I think, you know, there's also some questions around where the, the virtual um, event platforms came from you know so there are lots of kind of community-based apps that now do virtual events there are lots of you know apps that now do virtual events as yeah. well um the market's changing all the time what's interesting is you know when you do a demo you might find if somebody came out of a kind of powerpoint sharing a slide sharing app then there's a very heavy emphasis on the slide sharing. Now, if you've got an event which is really about the slides, that might be just what you want. But if that's not crucial to you, you know, you might you might think a little bit differently. Here's a model that we find really helpful, which which maps things across, you know, for those business events on the right hand side conferences and on the left hand side trade shows. And obviously events might have a little mix of those. And then at the top, that high functionality, minimal integration, keeping everything on platform. And then at the bottom, that low functionality requiring a lot of integration. So, for example, you know, we all know how to use Zoom. But if you wanted to build um, a full event experience around that, you would have to do integrations with a, a lot of other um, different pieces of technology. You know, in the top right hand corner are some of the platforms that we think for content led conferences with a lot of kind of expo booth experience can work really well. But this is our way of looking at things. It is not an exhaustive list, but it can be helpful for people to get a sense of I think that is you know, really how the market looks. I think that's really a really a fantastic slide that Sasha and um yeah, I think it's really useful to see it's to open my eyes to, to kind of how you have to look at things. Um, but I've got, if you don't mind, I've got a couple of questions. Um, I've got a couple of questions from the audience, sure. if that's okay. Um, so yeah. Kim Sullivan, hi yeah. Kim. Do clients understand underestimate the 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 pe Hang on. Do clients underestimate the time for people to get remote speakers set up and comfortable? And what the what are the challenges you face with this process, like bandwidth, wooden speakers, etc.? <laughs> yeah, no, that that's a really interesting question. I mean, absolutely, we think it takes to to deliver a really high quality digital event. We think can, can take up to three or four times as much prep time as for an in person event, and we are constantly educating our clients to explain what that is. And that's because you know, I think as I said up front. Every speaker knows how to rock up at the QE2 center and grab a coffee and get mic'd up. Um, but not everybody knows how to get into your particular digital studio or event platform and how the tech works and how they're going to communicate. And so there's a lot more dotting I's and crossing T's. And we are constantly educating our, our clients around that. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so what questions might you want to ask platforms? On the event questions, we've, we've kind of already looked about. The tech questions are interesting. Do you need the integrations? Maximum numbers on stage. Do you want a vanity URL? Can you do, if you're using your own registration system, CSV upload into your platform? Analytics are huge. The data you can give to both clients and sponsors, providing everybody is permission for data protection up front, you know, is phenomenal. And that can be really valuable. The chat, Q&A, upvoting, maximum participants. I've looked at some great platforms and then they've got a maximum of 2,000 delegates and that doesn't work for me can you white label it can you have an event library video on demand you know these are all going to be things that you're going to decide about you're going to want to think about the platform fees is it per event or an annual license pretty much every platform has some version of a per attendee fee whether it's per head or you know up to a hundred or a thousand delegates and payment terms so you're going to want to think about that this is a really key issue how robust is the platform you know, we've had a number of clients come to us who've been with 
platforms that have sold them something fantastic and then the delivery experience has been limited and so for us when we were doing our research something really key to us is you know what kind of support are you going to get what's the sla for that how robust is the um, development team and the technical support team and i'd ask people you know who are their biggest clients how many clients do they have because I think your platform is, you know, they're largely web-based platforms. They're evolving all the time. And so you want to know that there's a really good internal development and customer service team. Yeah. Ultimately, one well, of my virtual event design rules, every platform's a compromise and you just have to know what your priorities are. So what process are you going to go through? You're going to create your event specification requirements, evaluate the platforms against that, think about the support and scale side, do demos to the demo. Once you've got to the demo question, once you've got your list, absolutely do the demos, but I'm not sure I would do a demo for everything because there's a lot of platforms. Um, and I would do those with production platforms as well as production partners as well as platforms because we're going to talk about production later on. The platform's just the venue, realistically. It's what you layer on top of it. Um, you're going to make a long list, a short list, and you're going to make a decision. And to me, a really key kind of remote rule is event design before platform selection. Think about what you're going to do. So once you've been through that process, you're going to build a requirements grid. I love a spreadsheet. In fact, I'm using my business narrative mug today, but usually I'm using my spreadsheet mug, which is my second favorite mug. Um, you know, you're going to build a spreadsheet or a Google sheet, which is going to have your requirements down the left hand side. And then across the top, it's going to have the various platforms and how they meet them. And that's how you're going to uh, analyze it. And that can just be a really straightforward process. So that's production. And I want right. to talk about planning before we go to the break. Um, so on top of the platform piece, you want to be thinking about planning. And planning covers a lot of ground. Of course, we're all event managers. We know about project management and planning, which is phenomenally more complex for a digital event and a, and a lot more moving parts. There's that whole event experience design, creating something, you know, planning to create something that's really going to meet the objectives. We've got a model I'm going to show you around the event narrative framework, which can be, you know, quite useful to look at. Certainly in terms of timelines, um, you know, you, you really want to plan ahead. And I think I would say, pin down the content content format early that's really going to drive the production piece you know we'd say at the very least an eight week lead time for that production review for a kind of high production event you want to leave enough time to do your pre-records and get them edited on brand um, you want to plan for that texture content and also and we'll talk about this in the production piece you need time to plan for what are the video elements that you're going to need you know whether that's brand pieces or elements from your sponsors so you want to build all of that into your timeline i don't have to tell you that what's different about digital events is and we talked about you know there was one of those questions about the speaker tech chats rehearsals really allow for the time there and also, if you've got an event where you've got sponsors, exhibitors, partners, onboarding those to your platform, not just onboarding them technically, but onboarding them so they have a great experience, so that you're working really closely with the client in terms of what you want the sponsors and partners to achieve and onboarding them so that they get that. You know, on some of our events, we've actually found that the sponsors have been the most visited areas of, of the event, but that is because we have really worked with them to build a whole range of activities in their booths and content and presentations that are kind of hardwired into the program, but that takes time as well. Um, and also there's a lot of education, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna build your demo and then the clients are gonna take a look at it and then you're gonna tweak it. And so certainly for a first event with a client, you wanna allow time for that. And of course the crucial video production and content piece. As I said, the pre-prep, you know, can take substantially longer and you need to resource up for that, whether that's your internal team or whether you're working with partners. Don't underestimate that that increased complexity of virtual events and certainly kind of high production value virtual events. So we've touched on this already, but you want to talk, you want to know your event purpose up front when you're doing your planning. You know, you want to convene people to engage in conversation and community, but you might want to think about what are the relative 
weight of the different things you want is it about thought leadership and content is it about building community is it funnel building for other activities is it about brand building for your organization so thinking about that with your client um, can be a really helpful way of, of doing that planning to ensure the event delivers what it's supposed to deliver you obviously can't talk about digital events without talking about hybrid i'm not going to go I think there's a whole separate masterclass on what a hybrid event might look like, but certainly something to consider is what is the overlap of the in-person piece. You know, people are talking about Q3, Q4, having hybrid events, not entirely sure what that means, but what we're certainly doing is that we're building in live studios, branded live studios that some of the speakers can come to and record from there. It obviously has an additional resource implication because you're building your digital event as well as your hybrid event, as well as your, your in-person studio. But that's something you need to consider in that time. Sasha, can I just jump in there on, I just got a little I'm point just, on, just got a little point sure. on that one as well. Um, it's, I think it's really interesting how the hybrid, um, well, I don't even think they'll be called hybrid events. They're just events. And some of them are going to have an online Absolutely. You know, option yeah. as well. And it's going to be really interesting how people use them. You know, are they going to use them to kind of bring speakers in that they might not have been able to use because they can do it so much better and actually do that hybrid bit actually mm -hmm. in the, at, at the in-person stage. So everybody's there sat there and, and we're watching people, you know, speak, speaking on the screen. And as well as that, people then being able to watch it, you know, in a, in a much wider audience. I think there's got to be some really creative ways of, um, of using it all, to be honest. Absolutely. I think it's going to be very exciting to see what the next generation of events are like and how we kind of build yeah. on everything that we've learned so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just want to touch on a couple of other pieces around your planning. We love using this event narrative framework, um, which has got, and you can find more about this out on our website, actually. Um, so I'm just going to touch on it briefly, but just looking at what's the purpose what are the different strategic elements, your event objectives, your stakeholders? How do you design your content to meet that purpose and your marketing to meet that purpose? And then when you get to delivery, you execute with excellent excellence in an on message purposeful way. And crucially, delivering outcomes. What are those KPIs that you decide up front? And that's very much part of the planning that will be a successful event that will have your client delighted and have them coming back for more. In terms of planning, you absolutely want to be designing for engagement. We're very much about reimagining rather than recreating. So curating that content to be kind of shorter, sharper, more focused. Look for really engage ways to really engage your people, but not, you know, it's not enough to just say people can chat. You actually have to manage that chat. We have a whole kind of messaging on platform messaging schedule to encourage people to chat and guide them around the platform. And, you know, we've all seen, you know, very much people's authentic selves in their home offices and we want to keep thinking about creative solutions to to respond to that <laughs> you also want to be planning around how people consume the content you know are they intentional schedulers are they binge watchers are they multitaskers and the different ways people might experience that um one of our clients you know this is an event we did that had 180 people when we postponed it in March because that was the limit of the venue. When we did it in September, I think there were 1,500 people online and the client was just delighted, you know, seeing, he said, this is like watching people in the auditorium and finding out what's in their head at the same time. And so a well-planned and designed event can really create additional layers of kind of communication. We've talked a lot about networking and connection, and you want to think about that in your planning stage. I just want to introduce you to the production piece. Um, and so that is the third crucial Tetris piece on top of your platform, panel and production. There's two pieces to production. There's the platform production, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. And then there's producing all your kind of content and video. And we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail. But I'd just like to leave you with this thought. Your platform is really just a venue. You still need production on top of that. You wouldn't hire the QE2 centre and then say, hey, my brother-in-law is really, really good and he's got a great iPhone. Um, and so let's get him in to do all the AV production stuff. And and I think you're not going to want to do that for your for your digital event. But um, let me hand, hand back over to you, Neil, for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sasha. That was absolutely amazing. That's just part one, guys. We've got part two coming up in just a second. We've got a fantastic little interlude um, coming up of the DW Live Show panel. 
where we actually asked one of the most important questions that could be asked at the moment. This is a really, really serious question. Do not miss this one. And Sasha, when we come back as well, we've got some um, we've got some more questions and some good, really good points in the chat room. I don't know if you want to have a check them out, um, be, you know, whilst this is going on, and then we'll come back to them. But before uh, we run the uh, DW Live panel um, video, I'm just building that one up. Um, I just want to tell you guys about um, an event that we've got coming up on Thursday. Um, so it's Thursday at one o'clock. Um, first, sorry, Thursday at one o'clock, we have got a, um, we're running an event, it's going to be called uh, the DW Superstars, everything you need to know about becoming a superstar. So what we're going to be doing is hosting a little Zoom session to tell you guys about everything about the superstars um, initiative that we've got and how it can really benefit your business, how you really can't afford to, to not be on it, you know, the, the, the positive things it gives you and all the benefits as well. So if you can, guys, we'll put a link in the chat about that. Um, but please try and tune in, just register for that, and then we'll send you the Zoom the Zoom link. So without any further ado, sorry, Ed, I probably queued that up wrong. Um, here is the DW Live panel, and look out for this amazingly serious question that we're going to ask. Netflix show I've watched. I've got to be loyal. It's got to be the Duke. It's got to be the rather wonderful Bridgerton. So what have we been watching? Um, if I'm if I'm picking from Netflix, it's going to be The Queen's Gambit. It's a great a great show. I just watched that recently. Uh, if I'm going to go outside of Netflix, then it has to be The Mandalorian. The best Netflix show I've watched, hands down, is Snowpiercer. It's about a train. Um, in a world where global warming has took effect and it's too cold to live uh, and, and people are living on this amazing train. It is phenomenal. I binge watched it since I found out about it. Um, watch, watch, watch. My absolute favourite uh, Netflix programme was Unorthodox. I uh, really enjoyed that. Um, loved it. And right now I'm binging on how to get away with murder. So, so good. I'd probably say my favourite thing I watched on Netflix was The Big Flower Fight. Um, it's a programme where you have florists that make um, statues and they make sculptures for different tasks. So the best Netflix show that we've watched recently is definitely Marcella. I absolutely love it. And there's a new series out at the moment, so we've just started watching that as well. My favourite Netflix programme I'm watching at the moment has to be Designated Survivor. Netflix, what have I been watching? I've been watching, well, dipping in and out of The Crown, but I'm not very good at concentrating for too long. So I also like to watch um, random documentaries um, about, about strange, weird ones, like, for example, The Man with the Ten Stone Testicles. That was really good. I don't have a TV, so I don't watch Netflix. <laughs> Hi guys, I told you that was a really serious question. Some really serious answers, especially Jan Denning. We're going to start calling this the Jan Denning live show uh, panel because <laughs> she's uh, carving a niche for these <laughs> funny comments. Uh, but big thanks to everybody involved. All the names um, were up there earlier on. So thank you so much, guys. And if you want to get involved or you want to ask a question that we can ask to the panel, uh, drop me an email to info at the delegate wranglers.com. It'd be great to hear from you guys and, you know, make them entertaining. Let's have a laugh. And also serious when the serious ones as well. So anyway, on with the show. Uh, so back to part two. Um, 
Sasha, just before we go any further, there's some really good comments in the um, in the chat room, particularly talking about you know the human aspect of actually getting to know speakers and to talking to them a little bit more rather than them just kind of breezing past you and you know often they're going from one presentation to another when you're at a big exhibition or a conference so um it's really important isn't it all that stuff you get to know people a little bit more with the virtual events absolutely i mean i think that's certainly true although i have to say you know for our team at the business narrative and i saw that um couple of people Bex and Sally were kind of commenting there in the chat I think for our in-person you know for our digital events we're doing what we did in our in-person events which is the, those relationships you know we've always got stage managers in the green room micing people up they're the people that brief them all before but it's even more important for digital events because there is less of that sense of personal connection but we're creating that with digital I mean some of the clients I've worked with in the last year well most of the clients I've worked with in the last year are new clients I've never met in person but I yeah. feel like I really know them because you know we've been on zoom or platforms you know for a year and so it does seem to me that, that there's no barrier to kind of real connection um, but it is crucial for speakers to have that personal relationship and have that time to kind of chat informally because that's ultimately going to make for a better experience for everyone yeah so yeah a no, really good point great great question thank you so so let's get back to production and I think there are two parts to production the platform production and we're going to talk about what that means and the content and video production like I said the platform is just a venue you know without all the production and branding assets and event design and messaging and you know it, it it's not really the experience and as i say i think that we're you know we are increasingly creating things that feel more like tv i mean i found myself saying you know can we get the business narrative digitally originated graphic on the video on demand output like we all speak a new language um and are creating events and producing events that you know are complex and technically driven but done well are really amazing um here's an event this is my office on the day of an event watching it you know checking it out on a different screen seeing what it looks like on an ipad and a phone and and so for now this is what you know one end of digital event production looks like so let's look at the platform piece. How do you support your event platform? We're going to be talking about people later on. Um, the platform is only as good as the team working on it. You know, so think of your platform as the venue that needs that AV production stage set. And from a budget perspective, I would say, of course, you're not playing for you know venue and F&B, but everything that you would invest in your audio visual stage set production, and sometimes a little bit more, is what you're going to be investing in your platform <coughs> and production pieces on top of that. And so that virtual event platform, you know, for a high quality event needs that experience live streaming team so that you can do that live vision mixing. And also the people, you know, we've got a power combo of really great stage managers who get the technology and can put the speakers, um, you know, put their minds at rest and manage any issues that come up, you know, really efficient, effectively and live stream professionals you know, so actually, you know, we're staffing our digital events with more people than we'd have in person. Every studio has a technical live stream professional and a stage manager. And there are times for complex events where we're flip flopping between two studios to make sure that, you know, the event flows really tightly. So what does live streaming mean? Are you live streaming into your platform stage? Are you going to use the in-platform? So, for example, Hopin, you can use Hopin Studio. Um, we think you get a much slicker um, result by using a digital studio and, and streaming into that. So digital studio into the platform, the live vision mixing, the lower thirds, the branding that you can you can put behind that. The production management piece, you know, you're going to be building a production schedule that makes your in-person events you know, production schedule or running order look pretty straightforward. You're going to have all your live speakers and panels, your pre-records, your videos, all the various assets listed, um, all the different options for that. You're going to be working with an MC or host, um, ideally somebody who's got broadcast experience. We're ex increasingly working with broadcast journalists um, who have content knowledge, but actually know how to sort of be that linchpin, have real presence and can work with, you know, we're writing scripts for people, you know, we're changing those scripts live as, as, as uh, events happen, as events change. And so, you know, managing all of that piece is a big part of the production. 
we've talked about the speaker tech checks and we've also talked about you know having a live studio which is increasingly something people are talking to us about where some of the speakers will be broadcast from there what's the, what are the production values on that how are you going to brand it who's going to be there who's going to be coming in from the digital studio we've talked about hybrid events or events as they may be known um so i think that's a big part of the production management and i think we're finding that our team is spending a lot of time on managing all those different elements and assets with with the team um, and so another key piece around production management is what you do to the platform you know the platform is a bland generic platform until you build the assets and the branding and work out what the user journey is going to be. So you want to be thinking about what's the UX, the user experience on the platform, but also how can you have a really strong visual brand in terms of your event marketing that translates into a really engaging visual brand. Um, and I'm going to show you some examples later on on the platform. And don't underestimate the amount of time. I mean, we've got a huge schedule of um, you know all the various assets that need to be applied to an event once you've got the event design and know how many workshops there's going to be and how many coffee lounges and help desks we automatically have a staffed help desk you know all the um, booths and partners and so building the time into the production scheduling and management to make sure that you're creating all those assets so that the platform isn't just a platform it's your event platform so that's the kind of platform production piece then there's that whole kind of video asset piece, which, you know, we've all, well, many clients have moved on from Zoom and want to create something truly engaging, more of a TV like experience. And so we're finding for many of our clients, we're creating stings, you know, a little animated event logo or client logo, which in a way kind of punctuates the event. Um, how are we going to do the pre records? Are they just going to be straight pre records? Are we going to use creative TV directors? You know, our team has expanded to include animators, TV producers, um, film directors. And so we can create to different client budgets, different assets that make it feel really just, exciting. Just you know, on, for a longer just, event. Just, uh, just on, sorry to interrupt Sasha, just on this one. Um, it's really funny you say that because I feel like this is what like the DW Live Show has, has developed. You know, we're now doing stings pre-records, trailer heads, messaging videos, sponsor videos. You know, we've moved um, exactly yeah. exactly into that. And, you know, we want to make it more professional and, and more engaging all the time. You know, we're always looking to develop. So I think you're right. It's not just a matter of getting out there in a screen and people looking at you. It's adding those extra value things that, you know, make the show yeah. even better. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think those extra elements create that kind of that texture, that light and dark that, that make it really engaging and make people stay. You know, we'll create trailer heads. I mean, we had an event in November where we designed it to have um, three keynotes, one at the beginning, one in the middle, because it was going across UK and US time and one at the end. And so we made half a dozen trailer heads for the keynotes that were coming later on in the day, trailing the big panel that was around health and COVID. And so that, you know, and don't underestimate how much skill and resource you need to create that yeah. 15 second little trailer head, but it makes a massive totally difference. Agree. You know, messaging yeah. videos, signposting signposting people around the event sponsor videos you know are you happy to accept what they create or do you want to work with them and actually one of the things that's really crucial for us is that highlights video for digital you know for, for live events i'm going to have a ton of phenomenal photography we all know that screen grabs of people on an event platform do grab them you know at a slightly odd angle and so actually if you want if your client wants some kind of asset that you know they can show their sponsors or they can talk to people next year you know, we're making a kind of 120 second highlights video that brings together all the different elements of the event. And, you know, that that needs planning for ahead of time as well. Fantastic. Um, so I'm just going to show you some of the examples of, of how how things look. Um, you know, this is a client event that was truly global. You know, we had um, over 800 participants from right around the world, whereas typically, you know, that might not be the case. Um, we had Rob Ryan on this one um, being interviewed. And actually, this was phenomenal. You know, we, we did it as a pre-record and then edited it. And it was like watching a panorama program. Um, the sense of community and engagement, you know, this was also for um, our pediatric emergency doctors where um, we supported them in creating a video of, you know, lots of different community members singing and playing instruments. You know, these kind of interviews 
um, are the kind of things that a lot of our events are looking like. Um, did some work here, really strong brand, um, which really helps um, you know create that sense of presence, so that follow through. So you can see here we've got the backdrop and the slides on the left hand side. Um, really engaging chat down the right hand side. Talking about that strong brand, this is something we did for a client in November. Really strong visual look, bottom right hand corner, that's you know the event title. But also crucially, when you go back to that planning piece, this event answers one question, how can humanity harness the power of data in a changing world? And it's really helpful to think through the event with that one crucial question. Um, lots of pre-records um, and actually pre-records are a part of the event where you can have a photographer on site, obviously COVID safe and all health and safety checked, and that can give you some assets you can use in your marketing just with our pre-records. Um, here's an event we did for a client in um, one of the Oxford colleagues, colleges. Um, there's my fabulous event manager, Lizzie, COVID secure, um, you know, wine tasting, live streamed into the platform with, um, you know, two of the college team talking about the wine there. And ultimately, you know, obviously this is question time i think we're going to, be, we're going to be building studios that look more like this than you know anything we sort of typically expect so you know thinking just summarizing those speaker rehearsals that online mc making it feel like tv um and kind of that real engagement quick question sasha if I'm i could so if I, yeah sasha sorry if i could just jump in there's a really good comment from mikey sure. o'donnell in, in the chat room. Thanks, Mikey. What are your thoughts to entertainment for virtual events? We are now starting to get more traction doing what we would do to energize our in-person conferences and events in the virtual events world as well. As in short bursts of entertainment to kick off the event and midway to keep the energy or to end the event with a bang. And finding, although I've been ahead of the game since the first lockdown, many of the events companies we'd usually work with are just getting to grips with running a standard, standard virtual event. What are your thoughts on that? Really interesting question. And I completely agree. I mean, I think, you know, digital events are evolving all, all the time. And I think this goes to that point I made around, you know, talking to the authentic person. And so we've, you know, we've pitched some really interesting ideas to people. We had one event, um, you know, for, for senior doctors in a particular specialty. And so at their in-person event, they'd all go for a run every morning. And I said, OK, let's do a thing where once <laughs> you've registered, you get a link to the running app and we can have a virtual competition so that the chair on the second day can say, right, everybody's been for a run this morning. And, you know, here's the grid. Um, and you can see that, um, you know, Dr. Smith is winning and did the yeah. fastest run in the shortest time. And so whether it's things that, you know, really speak to that audience or whether it's about, you know, a quick yoga stretch, if that's the right thing or music. I mean, you know, we've been to events where, you know, people have had a DJ for kind of five minutes just to keep people dancing. I think what I love about digital events is there's no bounds to your creativity. So yeah. absolutely, you know. I think, think we're only, we're, and we're only scratching the surface. We're only just scratching the surface, as I say, as well on it. You know, we're only, it's, we're yeah, only a no, year absolutely. into absolutely. Really great question. I think absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to cover the final short section around people. And this is the final, um, you know, Tetris building block that, that goes on top of that. And that is about your team skills. Who's in your team? How do you assess their skills how do you decide your event tech stack and crucially how do you resource it and how quickly are you as a team learning about new technology and so one of the things that i would really encourage people to do is to put together a kind of skills matrix you know who have you got in your team and what skills do you need you know and that can cover everything from you know does your registration system hook straight into the you know the event platform or do you want to use the event platform registration system how are you going to link it um you know are you doing webinars are you doing digital events what kind of things are you doing so really think about the skills that you need and a lot of those are kind of technical skills um and work out where the gaps are and that will help you resource them either in terms of hiring people or in terms of outsourcing where the gaps are so that you can deliver great great events yeah here's a I model that. that i've often used so before lockdown, um, I very much saw this as a four gears approach to kind of in-person events. And this will be very familiar to people. There's the content that people putting together, all the program and speakers, the marketing, getting the audience there, the sales, bringing the sponsors and partners on board, and that crucial kind of logistics and operations, venues, supplier management, production. And so all of those things are still true. 
But with virtual events, I think there's two extra roles to really think about. And so one of those on the left hand side is around event design. What is you know that event experience design? What is the format, the text here? What are you going to build together? What's the flow? What's the user experience going to be? How are you going to manage the time zones? And then at the other end of that, once you've thought through all of this, there's all that production tech that we've talked about, the live streaming, the vision mixing, the, pr the platform production, once you've decided on the production to make sure that the event itself really delivers on your vision. Um, and so I'd really encourage you to think about, is that something you've got in house or is that something you need external skills with? Um, you know, we're supporting a lot of our clients around the event design and production pieces as part of what we do. And I think it's really important for people to kind of work out if that's something you've got in house or not. And so, you know, that external support question is about the skills you've got and whether, you know, you you need additional support. Um, I'm happy to take a couple of extra questions, but I just wanted to remind you that there is a, a checklist. Um, Here's the checklist, the four P's of virtual events, which kind of summarizes a lot of the stuff we've talked about today. And you can download that. I'm just by, um, I'm just going to put this in the Facebook chat. Um, you can download this by going to our website and signing up. I've just put it in for the Facebook chat, and um, and then you'll be double, you'll be opted in, double opt in because we care about GDPR, and then you'll um, be able to download that, which I really hope is useful. For people because you know we're all we're all we're all learning and we're all a team and so i'm really happy to kind of share some of our expertise four takeaways from today every platform has a compromise event design before that platform selection complexity of digital event production planning which i know in the chat lots of people have talked about and the platform's just a venue without the production the platform production and your live streaming production and your video production on top um it's it's not really going to get you very far. It's been wonderful to be here today. Um, I'm really happy to kind of follow up with people. So do drop me an email if you would like to um, chat more about this. And um, thank you so much for inviting me, Neil. It's been brilliant. Sasha, what can I say? I am going to give you a round of applause. That was just unbelievably <laughs> helpful. We're truly blessed to have you on the show. I mean, every time you, co you, you come on the show, blow my socks off with how you know just how knowledgeable and how informed and how professional absolutely amazing i think this will be a massively watched session i would urge everybody to tell their friends about this because it's been super super useful and we've honestly really appreciate it thank you so much it's been amazing so hooray <laughs> thank um, you it's been so, an absolute pleasure <laughs> So, guys, um, if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat even after the event's finished because um, Sasha can still access them if you tag her in. Um, she can still access the uh, the questions. So if there's anything technical, we'll put Sasha's uh, contact details on the wrap-up and, you know, any of these documents that she's been talking through, we'll put them on there. So um, thank you so much, Sasha. That's amazing. <laughs> so, guys, um, Thank you again for tuning in. Before we go, we just thought we'd tell you a quick um, what's on the show, what's coming up on the show in the next few weeks. So hopefully you can see the graphic on the screen. Um, next week is going to be really amazing. We've got a public speaking masterclass, um, you know, making money from being a, being a speaker with Neil Fallows. Um, it looks like it's going to be an amazing show, guys. I think the strap line is how you can become a 5K speaker. I wouldn't mind a bit of that. So, um, guys, make sure you tune in for that. We've also got, um, and Jeanette's actually in the chat room, we've got Jeanette Landon from um, Jet Black Squares, uh, basically going to be doing a smartphone photography masterclass, how you can use that for your business, how you can get the best out of your photography, you know, for your business and yourself. And then also uh, the following week on the 9th, we've got a content marketing masterclass with Paulina Kwasniak. Um, that looks amazing. She's talking about, um, how influencers um, you can you know how influencers use marketing in, in um, for business and things like this and lots of ways we can learn from it you know on a different level so that looks like a really good show guys we've got some amazing stuff coming up you know as, as well for the rest of this season so make sure you tune in um, thank you once again to Sasha to Ed Dom Callum and the team from Stream to our good friends at um, Events Case for the registration system. 
and especially to events here, our season sponsors, for um, for supporting us with this season. And guys, yeah, we'd really look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Look out for the wrap-up and we'll catch you next week. Thank you.